Viral Nader presents Charles Bronson's daughter finally confirms what we thought all along. Tough guy in movie history. From the 1960s to the 1980s, Charles Bronson was the perfect Hollywood bad guy. He was great at being a shooter, an Avenger, and a police officer. It's not an exaggeration to say that Bronson was the most famous actor in the world at the time. Even the famous Robert Redford couldn't match his success abroad. In Japan, his name was written on a sign that went around the whole block. There's one certain thing. Charles Bronson was a tough guy on and off screens. We know how a thief who used to be on the streets became one of the most famous and controversial movie stars of the 1970s. Why being in the military made his life better Charles Bronson joined the army as a way to get away from the hard work he was doing in a mine. Every day he ate three full meals. He also said it was the first time he wore real clothes, not hand-me-downs or clothes that didn't fit right. He also got better at English while in the military, even though he never spoke English at home when he was a child in Pennsylvania. People thought Bronson was from another country even when he was in the army because his accent was so strong. He was born and raised in the US though. Not only did Bronson speak English and Lithuanian, but he also spoke Russian and Greek. Getting his calling Bronson had a hard time finding his way after he got out of the military. He was a truck driver, a steel worker, and a mine worker, among other jobs. But he never really found anything that interested him. When he lived in Atlantic City, he met a group of artists. Everything changed. The players told him they could hire him to paint sets for their play. Bronson liked the work, so he said yes to the job. He tried acting on the side while making sets for the theater and quickly became interested in the skill. He'd found his real calling and chose to make acting his full-time job. The First Wedding Charles Bronson got married to Harriet Tendler in 1947. When they met in Philadelphia, they were both going to be actors and fell in love. That's where Tendler met Charlie Buczynski for the first time. He was 26 years old and they were both in acting school. Their families came from very different places. Tendler's father was a successful Jewish dairy farmer. Buczynski, on the other hand, was a Catholic who used to work as a coal worker. No matter what, the pair got married two years later, even though the father-in-law and other Tendler family members didn't want them to. While each of them kept working on their film jobs, Tendler gave them the most of the money they needed to get by. Early Years in Movies Around the beginning of the 1950s, Charles Bronson began to become known. Some of his first parts were in movies like The Mob and The People Against O'Hara, both of which came out in 1951 and were directed by the famous John Sturgis. He also showed how versatile he was by playing a police officer for the mob in Pat and Mike in 1952 and a prisoner in My Six Convicts in 1952 with the marrying kind also in 1952. He even tried his hand at a cute love story. Before you could blink, Bronson moved on to action and adventure movies like Red Skies of Montana 1952 and Diplomatic Courier 1952. These early parts showed that Bronson was a flexible actor who could work in any genre. His name changes. Charles Bronson's rise to fame wasn't easy. When he first came to Hollywood, he went by his birth name, Buczynski. During the height of the Red Scare in the 1950s, Bronson's agent suggested that he change his Lithuanian last name because he thought it might hurt his chances of getting work in Hollywood. During that time, Senator Joe McCarthy's anti-communist crusade led to witch hunts across the country, and Eastern Europeans were not immune to the backlash. The actor changed his name to Bronson. Say My Name is Charles Buczynski Charles Bronson had already made a name for himself in Hollywood under his real name, Charles Buczynski. One of his most famous roles was as an Apache warrior named Hondo in the 1954 movie Apache, which was directed by Robert Eldridge. He then went on to play roles in movies like Tennessee Champ in 1954 for MGM and Crime Wave, also 1954, which was directed by Andre de Toth. His job goes well. After playing the cruel Modoc warrior Captain Jack in the 1954 Western Drumbeat, directed by Delmer Daves, Bronson became known as a formidable bad guy on the big screen. His performance as Captain Jack was powerful. 
leaving a lasting impression on both audiences and critics. The fact that the character was based on a real person only added to the impact of his performance. He went on to have great parts in movies like Target Zero in 1955. From TV shows to movies and everything in between. In the late 1950s, Charles Bronson's playing career kept going strong when he got the lead part in the crime thriller The Sheriff of Cochise. The show, which started with John Bromfeld and was later called U.S. Marshal, Bronson went on to appear as a guest star twice on the newly named show in 1959. Besides his work on U.S. Marshal, Bronson also appeared on several TV shows. He had guest roles on the short-lived CBS comedy Hey Genie and showed off his acting skills in three episodes of the great crime show Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Bronson seemed to be able to do everything from serious roles to funny ones. Changing what the Western and TV are From 1960 to 1970, Charles Bronson was a well-known actor on both TV and in movies. In the ABC Western show The Travels of Jamie McFeeters, 1963 to 1964, he played Link, the wagon master with a good heart. As usual, Bronson brought his trademark grit and passion to the role, which made him a fan favorite. Besides that, he had a famous starring role on the Western TV show Bonanza in 1964. In an episode called The Underdog, he played Harry Starr, a guy who wanted to get back at the Cartwright family for killing his brother. The Effect of Trademark Bronson He played the major part of a shooter hired to protect a wagon train from thieves in the 1965 movie Guns of Diablo. This was another big hit for Charles Bronson in the Western genre. Bronson also made several memorable TV performances. He was a guest star in an episode of The Legend of Jesse James during the 1965-1966 TV season. His intense acting style added a new level of excitement to the popular Western show. In 1965, Bronson showed even more of his range by appearing in an episode of the third season of ABC's World War II thriller Combat. He was Velasquez, a demolitions expert whose job it was to destroy an important German supply line. Never to Lead His acting in the 1965 World War II movie Battle of the Bulge was praised, even though he only played a small part. The next year, he had fourth billing in MGM's The Sandpiper, which did well at the box office thanks to the star power of Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. Even though Bronson was named after two big names in Hollywood, his work in The Sandpiper was praised and he continued to move up in the business. In the same year, he got third billing in the movie The Property is Condemned, 1966, which made him an even bigger star in the business. He Gets Married Again His second marriage was to English actress Jill Ireland. They got married on October 5, 1968, and stayed together until she died in 1990. They met for the first time in 1962, when Ireland was still married to singer David McCallum from Scotland. Interestingly, Bronson and McCallum worked together on The Great Escape, where Bronson proudly said he'd marry his wife one day. Bronson kept his word. After many years, the Bronsons moved into a fancy house in Bel Air, Los Angeles and had seven kids. Two were from Bronson's first marriage, three were from Ireland's first marriage, one was adopted, and two were on their own, Zuleika and Katrina, with Katrina also being adopted. Love Partners and Soulmates Jill Ireland was often in movies with Charles Bronson as his main girl. They ended up being in a full 15 movies together, which is pretty crazy. When Bronson and Ireland were shooting on site, they would often bring their whole family with them to spend time with each other. In addition to living in Los Angeles, they liked going to a charming old home on 260 acres in West Windsor, Vermont, where Ireland raised horses and taught their daughter, Zulika, how to do well in horse shows. In the 1980s and early 1990s, the family often spent the winter breaks at Snowmass, Colorado. Finally Getting Noticed In the early 1970s, Bronson kept working in European movies. He was the lead in several French and Italian action movies, including Terence Young's Violent City and Cold Sweat, both of which came out in 1970. He was also in the French chiller Someone Behind the Door with Anthony Perkins and the French, Spanish, and Italian film Western Red Sun, which was also directed by Young. Bronson played Joseph Valachi in the Valachi Papers, which came out in 1972 and was directed by Young again. He was so well-known abroad that, along with Sean Connery, 
he won the special Golden Globe Henrietta Award for World Film Favorite Male in 1972. People knew about him. Bergman reportedly said that Bronson looked like he had murder written all over his face, which was a good way to describe him based on his past deeds. As a child, he would take strangers' money by threatening them with a bottle. As a soldier, he once broke a sergeant's arm in a fight. Bronson had violent outbursts even when he was an actor. For example, he attacked a director after a fight over a scene. Because of his bad name, Michael Gordon Peterson, who was called Britain's most notorious prison hardman, picked the name Charles Bronson when he changed it in 1987. A Friendship Ends Bronson was a well-liked and recognized actor who didn't like talking about the topics of his movies and talks. He was also known for always being loyal to the people who worked with him regularly. But when Death Wish 3 came out, everything changed. When Bronson saw the finished film, he was shocked by how many bloody scenes director Michael Winner had filmed without his knowledge or permission. Their normal working relationship fell apart because of the lack of openness, which made Bronson sad. The relationship between them failed in the end. Despite this, Bronson stayed dedicated to his job and gave great performances in many other movies. In the 1980s Action Movies During the late 1980s, Charles Bronson played different parts in several exciting action movies for Canon Films. Assassination in 1987, which was directed by Peter Hunt, was one of them. In Assassination, Bronson played a Secret Service agent whose job was to keep the First Lady safe from a plan to kill her. Brother Bronson kept working with Jay. In three more movies, Lee Thompson was in Death Wish 4, The Crackdown, Messenger of Death, and Kinjite, Forbidden Subjects. The story of Paul Kersey, an engineer who became a criminal in Death Wish 4, The Crackdown, continues. Messenger of Death had Bronson play a newspaper writer who was looking into the horrible murder of a Mormon family. In Kinjite, Forbidden Subjects, Bronson played an L.A. police agent who was looking into a tough case. He Deals with Loss Jill Ireland died on May 18, 1990, at the age of 54, after a long battle with breast cancer. Bronson was very upset and did his best to deal with the loss. During her lifetime, she had famous parts in movies like The Big Gun Down and Break Heart Pass. She was also known for her work on TV, including the show Shane. In December 1998, Bronson married Kim Weeks, an actor who used to work at Dove Audio. Weeks has worked with Ireland before to make her podcasts. They were together for five years before Bronson died in 2003. A few of Bronson's last works Charles Bronson was in a lot of movies and TV shows in his last few years. When Sean Penn started directing movies, The Indian Runner came out in 1991. After that, he was in two TV movies, Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus in 1991 and The Sea Wolf in 1993. Bronson's last major part in a movie that came out in theaters was Death Wish 5, The Face of Death, in 1994. He kept working in the business, though, and was in a trio of made-for-TV movies called The Family of Cops. The first movie came out in 1995, then Family of Cops 3 in 1999, and Breach of Faith, Family Cops 2 in 1997. True and False Charles Bronson often talked badly about the six years he worked in coal mines, where he hurt his back a lot. He said the work made his hands look bad and left scars on his legs and chest that will never go away. According to Brian D'Ambrosio, he wrote a history of Bronson in 2001. The actor spread lies about his youth to fool reporters who were easy to fool. He said that he couldn't speak English in high school and that his mother sold him to tourists and that he wore his sister's clothes to school at times. Harriet Tendler, Bronson's first wife, said the story that he wore dresses was absolutely ridiculous. She also said that his brothers often made fun of his made-up bad luck. Was making up stories a way to deal with things? There's no way to be sure. Getting out of acting and dying When Charles Bronson had surgery to replace his hip in August 1998, his health started to get worse and he quit acting. He passed away on August 30, 2003, at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. He was 81 years old. A lot of people thought he died of bronchitis or Alzheimer's, but neither of those conditions was listed on his death certificate. 
Instead, the certificate listed respiratory failure, metastatic lung cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and congestive cardiomyopathy as possible reasons for his death. Charles Bronson was buried in West Windsor, Vermont at Brownsville Cemetery. As the years have gone by, many of his biggest fans have come to this part of the world to honor him. Giving Honor to His Legacy When Charles Bronson died on August 30, 2003, many media, including the New York Times, said that he had only driven a delivery truck in Arizona while he was in the service. This was not true. However, Bronson's old friends spoke out and asked for retractions. In the Pacific, he had flown 26 combat flights as a tail gunner in the 61st Bombardment Squadron, which was based in Guam. They said he was a war hero. Ken Tro, a former B-29 flying partner, told the Great Falls Tribune that the person he knew as Charles Baczynski was quiet and easy to get along with. People who knew him liked him and admired him. Never officially recognized or given even though Charles Bronson did a lot of great work as an actor, he never got any official awards or credit. During his career, Bronson only got two votes and three awards, which is a very small number given how much he did. Out of those five comments, only one was for a well-known award, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Another mention was for a Primetime Emmy in 1961. He also shared the Henrietta Award at the Golden Globes for World Film Favorite with Sean Connery. Awards are often used to show that someone is good, but they don't always show how valuable or talented an artist is. And when it comes to Bronson, his impact and services to the movie business make him a real movie star. Besides tough guy Charles Bronson Charles Bronson had a soft side. Even though he seemed like a tough guy, he loved art very much and was a very good painter. Well-known film critic Roger Ebert said that he often preferred talking about his art in talks over his acting job. But Bronson didn't want his fame as a movie star to affect how well his drawing sold. To make sure that his art was only appreciated for its artistic value, Bronson painted under his real name, Baczynski. This trick worked, and Bronson sold several paintings based on their artistic value alone. No matter how tough or reserved someone seems, it's amazing what interests and skills they have hidden away. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe! Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon 